G'day folks, it's Craig Caspi from Edible Gardens. I'm here with the Melton City Council Learning Directory. And today we're going to be talking and doing a little bit of preserving. Preserving is a pretty big subject, so I'll walk you through some nifty ways of being able to save some of the things that you may be throwing out unknowingly and uh, that could be used in, uh, in, in other places. I'm going to show you how to preserve some beetroot. Um, so let's, uh, let's get on with that. One of the things that I, I think I learnt very early in the piece is that, um, particularly when you've got school-age kids, they're a bit fickle when it comes to things like bananas. They get a little bit of black on the skin and they, they don't want to eat them. So um, I was introduced to dehydrating uh, many, many years ago, and this is a dehydrating machine. Um, they're relatively cheap, let me tell you. Uh, they're worth a, 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 a small fortune in what they save you if you, uh, if you look them up. They heat up uh, and they blow air through a variety of different uh, trays, as you can see there. And these that I've got in, in, um, on the top tray here are, believe it or not, grapes. Now, I've got a glut of grapes at the moment at my house, and rather than throw them out, because we can't eat all that we've produced, I actually sit them, picked one by one off the, off the, uh, the vine and um, sit them in the top of the trays and I turn the dehydrator on and in two days I have wonderful fresh sultanas that I've grown myself. Um, so that's a great way of being able to make your produce go a lot further. But you could be doing things like tomato, for instance, you know, sun-dried or semi-dried tomatoes are done this way. Um, I, I sometimes have a glut of zucchini, so if you cut your zucchinis down into about inch thick or 25 millimetre pieces and put them in the dehydrator and set that going overnight, you'll find that they're nearly wafer thin in the next morning and uh, when you next come to do a casserole in the, in the months that you don't have zucchinis, you can go out and pick fresh from the vine You've got to grab a handful of these and throw them into your casserole and they'll rehydrate and uh, hey presto, you're back in business. So a banana, um, very simply, and it's just this, this easy, you simply peel the banana, slice it reasonably thinly. I tend to slice them on an angle so that you get a little bit more surface, surface area. Now, when you put these into the dehydrator, you want to make sure that you don't touch anything with each piece. You've got to make sure that they're separate. That way the air gets around them and they'll dehydrate nicely. If you let it touch any, something, you'll start and find that they tend to condensate a little bit and they take much, much longer to dehydrate. So you want that constant airflow around each layer. Um, I just simply set this and forget it overnight. It's thermostatically controlled, they all are, and you'll find that they'll cut in and out depending upon uh, the environment. Um, and it's that simple. Now you could be drying herbs, you can do that this way, um, which is very, very simple. So if you're buying herbs, uh, can I urge you to perhaps think again and maybe grow some in your garden and pick them fresh when you can and if you get a bit of a glut of them then simply do what I'm doing here and then uh, put them in a dehydrator. So there you go, that's simple. Wid goes on and we'll simply plug that in and set it going and we'll uh, perhaps come back to it uh, later in the session to see how they're progressing. Now on with the beetroot. Um, now beetroot um, is a wonderful um, vegetable I've got to tell you. Um, there's always a place in my garden. I grow them in all sorts of spots, um, beneath trees, in semi-shade, where there's a hole in the garden that's not doing very much, I grow one of these. And I tend to grow them all year round, so they're a great versatile product, um, particularly roasted. But for summer salads and the like, pickled beetroot's probably about my favourite way to, to have this. So, but that's how you generally get them in a supermarket. Um, now the one thing I need to tell you is that you should not ever peel these. Um, I'll show you how that's done very shortly, how we get rid of the, the skin on the outside. And you also should not ever cut the tops of them off. Now these leaves, I might add, you can cut and dice up like silver beet and steam or, or boil. Uh, and particularly a smaller salad type 
uh, leaves in, in the in the center of the beetroot. You can be can be eaten raw and fresh in a salad. They're delicious. But the way you um, you you deal with the beetroot once you've pulled it out of the ground, and this is obviously a baby beetroot, um, and and give it a, a quick wash. The next thing is that you twist the top off. Don't ever cut it because if you cut it, what will happen is that the beetroot will bleed and it will bleed most of its goodness out. So just remember that. That's just a bit of a tip for, for what it's worth. Um, I've got a pot of boiling water happening here and uh, I've got two beetroots that size in there that's been going for about the last 10 minutes or so. Um, I'm going to pop that one in with them and I'll just raise that temperature up a little bit so that it's on a, a rolling simmer and uh, we'll need to, to keep that simmering along um, for probably about 35 to 40 minutes uh, or until a skewer comes out of it reasonably easy. And then we can take that to the next stage. Um, but of course we need a, um, a liquor that, that goes into uh, the, the, uh, the beetroot and we're going to need uh, two cups of sugar, which I've already measured prior to coming here, which this is two cups. It seems like a lot, but believe me, in the scheme of things, it's not. Um, we need one litre of white vinegar. Look, you could probably cut back a little bit on the sugar if you, if you wanted to. Um, the other ingredients. Uh, we need some cloves. About 12 cloves. Peppercorns. Same with the cloves, 12 of these. Uh, we need allspice and we need one teaspoon of allspice. Let me tell you, once you've made this for yourself, you'll never go back and buy it. It's, uh, it's delicious. Uh, next one in is a teaspoon of cinnamon powder. Okay, the next ingredient in is one teaspoon of salt. Now, the next two ingredients are optional extras. And I know that some people potentially may not like um, the aniseed or anise flavour that these give out. Um, this is star anise and uh, I think that it adds a complexity to this liquor for the beetroot that is just second to none. So I use one and a half of those. You don't want to overdo it because it is a pretty strong sort of a spice. And the other one that's quite a subtle but warm spice is cardamom pods and uh, I use about three or four of those. There you go. So this now needs to be brought to the boil and then simmered um, for about 15 minutes and then left to cool. So. We'll give that a good mix, just to help dissolve down the, the sugar and get it all combined and incorporated together. And of course we'll run this through a strainer and uh, down the track once it's ready to go. And we'll pour this over the top of our beetroot once it's been uh, peeled and sliced. 
And I say peeled advisedly because that's not really what we're going to do. But uh, you'll soon see. So we'll be back very shortly with all of this ready to go. We're back and we're just about ready to take these beetroot out of the pot. The skewer is coming out of them reasonably easy now. So you can let them get really, really soft. Um, you probably want a little bit of give to these. Don't let them go really, really soft. But uh, you'll guess, I guess when you, uh, when you start this, you'll work out what one will best suit your taste. Um, I'll take them over to the sink and I'll run some cold water. The key to success with peeling beetroot is not to use a peeler as such. You actually use your hands and rub the skin off under a little bit of running water and it will come off really, really easily. If you had to peel it, it would have bled a lot of the goodness out of the beetroot. Whereas if you rub the skin off at this stage, all the goodness has been held in. There you go. Next stage is to... Uh, I'll just clean these up and we'll put them up on the bench and we'll cut them down and we'll strain the pickling liquor and we'll put it all together. Okay folks, so what I'd do is halve them and slice them about five millimetres thick, pop them straight into a container that you're going to use to um, be able to refrigerate. You can cut them into cubes too, which I've, I've done in the past as well, that works just as well. still certainly hot inside which is kind of good because you don't want them too cool because uh, they'll suck up this pickling liquor and uh, you'll get some added flavor into the beetroot pretty quickly when they're warm okay next thing is we'll grab this this uh, strainer and the pot and we'll strain the liquid through it. And that, my friends, is as simple as it is. This will be ready to eat later this afternoon or tomorrow. Keep it refrigerated for as long as you can allow it to last because believe me it's delicious. So there you go folks, that's pickled beetroot. I'm going to show you how to make some kale crisps today. Um, before I go any further though I better let you know that kale has oxalic acid in it and it ought not be consumed raw. It needs to be either steamed or slightly blanched before you consume it. So for those of you who are using it uh, raw in smoothies, you might want to think again. Have a bit of a look, do a bit of a search, you'll soon see what I'm talking about. It can be a little bit harmful to your health. So if you're consuming a lot of it, just be a bit careful. But on the other hand, it is a very, very healthy uh, um, vegetable to grow. Um, and it's uh, it, it's got much more magnesium and, and iron in it than spinach, believe it or not, and broccoli. So it's uh, certainly a, a great thing. Um, but chips, um, that's something different. I'm, I'm guessing most a lot of people would not have, have uh, thought to make um, a kale crisp. And I'm going to show you how, and it's very, very simple. Um, these have been washed and dried, and simply tear the, the leaves off, the, uh, off the, the main rib or stem um, you don't want the stem engaged because it's tough. So you want to leave that on there and tear, tear them into smaller bite-sized pieces, a bit like that. Pop them into the bowl. Now you want to set your oven uh, to 180 degrees and you're going to also need a baking tray. So with a little bit of greaseproof paper on the top of it. Now I'm going to drizzle a little bit of olive oil in here, I'm going to try and, best I can, get each of these leaves slightly coated in, in olive oil. So it doesn't take very long for them to, to get that coating. It's just to be a bit persistent and get your hands in there and sort of rub them together so that they, they coat one another. Don't use too much olive oil. 
as you can see they they all look pretty good okay next thing is a slight small pinch of salt now at this stage this is just simply plain salt but you could put a flavored salt in there if you wanted to um, um, rather than make salt and vinegar salt you could just add a, a light dash a very light dash of vinegar and and some salt might be chicken salt it could be a chili salt a smoked salt they're wonderful and a great accompaniment instead of sitting there chewing on um, potato crisps that we, we get cold time and time again that are no good for us um, these are a great alternative so just simply spread them out on the tray they shrink quite a lot um, and we'll cook these for approximately 10 minutes but at about the eight minute mark you want to be at the door of the oven because um, they, they start to go crisp quite quickly and you don't want to take them too far you don't want these to be blackened because I can assure you if they're blackened you won't eat them and the whole point of this is to, uh, to, to, to make your produce go a little further so that's it ready for the oven and we'll be back very shortly when we pull them out of the oven okay folks so eight minutes was all that it took um, and as you can see they're not black but they're quite crisp can you hear that mm. and they are delicious let me tell you well folks this has been going now for about an hour and a half so not long in the scheme of things generally they take well and truly overnight but as promised let's have a quick check in and see how they've gone and now you can see that they have diminished in thickness and in size um, quite considerably and they're a bit sticky to touch uh, that's the sugars coming out in them but uh, about another seven and a half hours to go I reckon so seriously look up uh, dehydrating it, it's a wonderful thing to do bye for now thanks for watching make sure you check out the Melton City Council learning directory website and Facebook page for more online workshops and classes